volunteers, in this video, Clean Ocean Action will walk you through the appropriate methods for collecting both sand and water samples for Clean Ocean Action's Citizen Science Microplastic Research Project. This protocol for sample collection is very important for ensuring that our data is accurate, so please do not do your best to follow these instructions. Before taking any samples, make sure you have all of the materials needed for collection. You will, have, you will need a volunteer sampling data sheet, as shown by in Abby's hand, a pen or pencil, gloves, three location markers, a measuring tape, a GPS or smartphone with GPS capabilities, a quadrat, six collection jars that have been cleaned and labeled according to COA protocols, a metal spoon, and a ruler or tape measure. The first step is to fill out all the general information and shoreline characteristics sections of the sampling data sheet. Next, you will need to take digital photos of each sampling site. Instructions for taking photos can be found in the volunteer manual in chapter 3.6. Now you can start collecting samples. Sample collection should be done during low tide if possible. First, you need to locate the high tide line and the rack line on the beach. All of your sampling locations should be in the area between these lines. Now put on your gloves and using your markers, locate three distinct locations on the beach that are 100 feet away from each other and in a straight line parallel to the water. If this is done correctly, there will be 200 feet between your first and third locations. Later, you will be taking one sample from each of the three locations. Now you can record the GPS coordinates in decimal degree format at the two outermost sand sampling points and place that on your data sheet. Walk to the northernmost sand sampling location and turn so your back is to the water. Place the quadrat on the sand so that the marker is directly outside the upper left corner of the quadrat. Remove any debris that is visible to the naked eye and place it outside of the quadrat. Count the number of debris items that you removed and note their comp composition. Remember to record this information on your volunteer sampling data sheet. Verify the jars are appropriately labeled. To collect your sample, remove the cap from the collection jar. Using a metal spoon, remove the top layer of sand, which should be about two centimeters in depth from the inside of the quadrat and place the sand in the collection jar. Continue removing sand until the jar is full. Remember to put the cap back on the collection jar. Now use the ruler or tape measure to measure the, tep the depth of sand that you removed from each corner and the center of the quadrat to the nearest millimeter. This should give you five measurements, which you should then record on the volunteer sampling data sheet. Repeat this process two more times at the other sand sampling locations that are identifiable by your markers. Now it is time to collect your water samples. The three water samples will be collected in a direct line with the three sand markers. Please make sure that sand one matches up in location with water one. First, ensure that you are wearing gloves or reapply gloves as needed. Wade out into the water until you are about knee deep. Now position yourself so that your back is to the beach and you are facing the horizon. From here, record the GPS coordinates in decimal degree format. Wait until visible sediment has settled and the water appears clear. Take note of the predominant current flow direction because you will need this information in a moment. You are now ready to collect your sample. Take a jar and without removing the cap, submerge the entire jar into the water. Make sure that the jar is not touching the bottom of the sediment. 
Now with your other hand, remove the cap from the jar. Let the jar fill with water. Once it is full, take the jar out and pour out into the water downstream of where it was collected. Do this two more times so that you rinse out the jar a total of three times. Now fill up the jar using the same method as before for a fourth time. This time, be sure to tap the water filled jar with, while it is com still completely submerged. Repeat this process, including rinsing, two more times at the appropriate flag location. If the contents of any of your samples contain other objects, like seaweed, jellies, or other debris, empty the water downstream of where it was collected, then rinse out your jar three times, just like you did before, and try you again. You are now done collecting your samples. You should have three sand and three water samples. Remember to clean up all of your materials so nothing is left on the beach. Thank you for volunteering to help.